Hello, this is the AVIT department, Westminster Computer Lab. Today we want to talk about um, following policies and procedures. This link says, why should I follow policies and procedures? Well, because it's a very, very important thing. Some people might think, well, policies and procedures are just to increase the blood pressure of uh, certain departments that are maintaining the policies, but actually that's not entirely true. <laughs> um, I am a volunteer for the AVIT department and sometimes it's not the, the the big thing, sometimes it's the little things and the undetectable things. Um, try to see it from this perspective. Um, when you're overseeing something like a computer lab, there's a lot of things that are invisible and things that people just don't see. And I think it's just human nature that they, uh, because it's out of sight, it's, it's out of mind. In a way, um, people that look after the computer lab are, are the caretakers, are the, uh, the protectors of the system. And um, from time to time, they may see things uh, that other people um, don't. Um, and also, by not following policies and procedures, could um, require people like AVIT volunteers at the computer lab to do a lot of cleaning up after uh, after people and a lot of needless uh, um, extra work. The best way I could describe this is, I, I'm a parent, um, I have a couple of uh, children that uh, don't always pick up after themselves and sometimes I feel like, oh geez, you know, I'm always the one that's uh, that's doing this and uh, sometimes if you take a break from it it, it doesn't get better it uh, the laundry starts to pile up and I think the best case scenario is is to try to teach uh, the youth to clean up or to prevent it from happening in the first place the old expression uh, place for everything and everything in its place well we don't live in never never land uh, you know we're based in reality here uh, but let me try to maybe mention some ideas or strategies that uh, could help um, prevent this from happening. Um, one, one of the first things that now we, this computer lab has and that the congregation now has is a set of um, instruction, instructional videos available 24-7, seven days a week. 365 days a year, played from the comfort of one's own home or here in the computer lab. Uh, in particular, YouTube videos that um, the AVIT department has gone to great lengths to, uh, to create uh, to give instructions and procedures on how to do things. Remember, procedures and policies are what, the glue that kind of holds the system together and make sure that it runs effectively. So one of the first things, and probably will be incorporated into the um, new initial um, AVIT training session, is to steer or direct um, instructors into this resources, just on the basics of uh, computer lab basics. Uh, these uh, resources are so comprehensive that there is a YouTube video on how to actually use this res resource itself. It's important to realize that not only are these um, training videos, but as an instructor, if you find that students aren't following the procedures and the recommended procedures, for example, the big one is file and folder management. In there, I mentioned that um, um, when saving a document, uh, students or people should not be saving away from the default area um, where the uh, work is being saved. Why? Because it affects so many things. For example, the grab work application that is talked about in a YouTube video uh, depends or assumes that all the work is in this one particular area or starting point um, and if people override or stop um, or uh, fail to follow the procedures then Im uh, immediately it makes this particular program not work and then there's the thing well this program's not working when really well no it's working it's just that people weren't following the proper procedures to take advantage of this great tool to save teachers so much time so instead of uh, getting high blood pressure or popping a gasket um, if this is 
you know, determined by ABIT, and by the way, it's so easy for us to write a little program uh, that every time the computer system logs in to check a file count in areas where the files really don't belong, and after a, a certain threshold is crossed, like 10, um, 10 or 5 f um, files are in the wrong place, automatically send uh, yours truly um, a report, and <laughs> um, then, you know, we'll, you know, they'll make it easier for us to provide proactive feedback to the instructors, in which in turn the, the, the instructors can go back and do a, a recap. I guess this is a, maybe a lab training reinforcement school, uh, but more importantly that the, now we have a proactive way in which the instructors can go to the students and say, could you please bone up on this because, you know, it's important uh, to follow the rules to make sure that uh, um, that other people like ABIT volunteers don't feel like we're always cleaning up after after people. It, you know, it's it's attaching a price tag. There's no easier way for me to say it. But price tags sometimes, if they're non-monetary, if they're friendly, sometimes allow people to um, um, attach value to something and say, yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, I, sh I should be putting it in there because it would have an effect on a teacher grabbing the work and to uh, help administrate the area. And as long as people see this, I think that they could, uh, they could appreciate it. Uh, one more thing that I do want to mention too, uh, and this hasn't been put into place uh, at the time of this YouTube video, but uh, will be coming into place, is something that's called an acceptable use policy. It's hard to say to a student, uh, well, you're not allowed to do that when the student will come back and say, no one ever told me. Uh, it's like in colleges or high schools that if uh, someone was caught uh, maybe fudging on a test or you know cheating on a test, that you say, well, you weren't allowed to do that and you're going to be penalized. And the student will simply say, well, no one ever told me. And, <laughs> and in that case, leaves that um, system open for appeals where maybe a student will, will get off scot-free. So, not getting into the into the morals of this, um, I just want to show you that um, an acceptable use policy uh, can be placed in here. Now, this acceptable use policy is just a demonstration, and what's kind of cool here is I'm using the iTalk uh, application to show um, a demo for you guys on how this was set up. And this program was actually created. I think I created it three years ago, so it'll be nice to actually see it uh, come into place. But let me give you an example. This isn't set up into place right now. I'm just going to go into the first terminal here and uh, normally what will happen is when students um, log into their account this will automatically come up but for right now because it's not in place and, and uh, the church will have to take a look at this and come up with an official set of uh, policies uh, to inform the students uh, then um, then it'll come in then it'll be automatic but I'm just going to launch this up uh, manually and when I do that uh, and I run it a little dialog box comes up. Here's the acceptable use of the policy. You have 20 seconds to acknowledge yes, which means I've read this stuff. And 20 seconds is a long time. I have read this stuff, and I uh, I agree by it by clicking on yes. That shifts the responsibility onto the user. And look at that. 20 seconds ha has gone by, and you may not see this right now, uh, but the system logged out. There we go. It says host unreachable. No user logged in. So it, it's kind of like beat the clock. 20 seconds is a lot of time, but it can be easily um, adjusted for um, other times, like to extend the times. At the same time, and, and the great use of this application iTalk, I'm not going to log back in. I'm just going to focus in on another workstation. Here it is, and I'm going to run it again. And uh, I'm going to run it again. And this time I'm going to see it and look through. And these are just demo stuff. Uh, this can be custom tailored for any account. Uh, if it's a kid's account, uh, to be a little less um, abrupt and, and state this stuff in a friendly way. I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to listen to this. I'm going to click no. And when you click no, you pay a price. It hogs you out because you're not agreeing to it. So hence, I'm not going to allow you to use the uh, <laughs> account if you're not going to abide by the terms. Let's go into the third one. This is sort of interesting, getting a little bit sneaky here. But you know, it's control, it's automating stuff to make one's life a little bit easier. And then uh, point and double click onto uh, this and run it. 
And someone will go, well, okay, I want to get around this problem. Uh, obviously, I have to do something within 20 seconds. Uh, I'm not going to click on no. I'm going to pull a little sneaky, and I'm just going to close that window. And when I close that window, guess what? <laughs> you guessed it. The system actually shut down. Or it didn't shut down, it logged out. So three strikes and you're out. Uh, that's not true. We should always give people uh, um, chances here. So the fourth one that I just wanted to demonstrate to you, after the person goes through this long area of trying to play the game, then they go, you know what, I'm tired of this. Let me just read it and just click on yes. And hence, here we go. So. Um, so it's a proactive way of just um, attaching a price tag, right? Of showing people that there are rules of accountability. And whether they decide to read it or not, you, it, it is psychological. It is indicating that there is a code of conduct that needs to be practiced here. And um, in the acceptable use policy, perhaps in some of those bulleted items can indicate, um, you know, save work where the, where the defaults are and, uh, and uh, don't mess around with the computer system because okay, uh, it's there for the use of everyone. So just in two simple examples, I've shown a way or a method to, without the teachers having to do this every time the students log in, have them reminded of the responsibilities, but also to have a mechanism that if the students aren't following it, have AT come in and, um, and uh, have the teachers um, um, go back and reinforce uh, the proper procedures and encourage the students to do the same. Again, this is AVIT and we want to automate things to be more efficient and to help you guys out and to make this process much quicker. Talk to you later.